name is Mohsen, the last name is Ghazi Zadeh. It's an Iranian last name. I did, all my life I haven't changed it yet, which is fine. I've had stories about it. Anybody likes to know, later on we can chat. Here's my contact information. And the one thing I want you guys to know is the fact that, yeah, I'm an Agile coach. And the reason I am an Agile coach is because I believe what he does. So I am totally and uh, wholeheartedly I'm passionate about Agile. And the reason we're having this talk here is because uh, I've been participating in some of the events here, part of school, not here, I'm from Los Angeles. But uh, one of the things I realized that there hasn't been any topics on as far as uh, when it comes down to product and product organizations is that why is it necessary and how is it going to, I mean, in, in this day and age, most of the companies that you go to, I mean, obviously the keyword of Scrum and Agile is thrown around. I mean, people talk about that, right? And uh, you want to know why. And I thought it would be a cool thing to give a talk about that and see how this role actually contributes, right? Question is why Agile? Um, I'm assuming, and this is a, tell me if this is a wrong assumption, all of you guys are in tech. Am I correct? All right. And all of you guys, in your companies, you guys, somehow, somewhere, there is a word of Agile or Scrum, right? This is a typical conversation, by the way, that I have when I go anywhere for, uh, for coaching and consulting. It's just the fact that the misunderstanding when it comes down from Agile and what it is and how it actually gets rolled out in companies makes people feel like that. I hate it. Somehow, somewhere I read and I checked it in the internet and of course it's true. Apparently we're the fourth industrial revolution. So apparently the industrial revolution started with the steam engine, then it was the assembly lines, and after that it went into um, uh, the you know what they call the internet revolution or the computer revolution, which started somewhere around in the late 70s, and eventually we got here, which is what they call digital revolution, which is basically everything is digitized and communication has become faster. And supposedly we're supposed to have more time, but obviously we don't. I mean, one of the issues everywhere that we go, there's a little work-life balance that is not there. Anyways, so as, as, as this industrial revolution is ongoing, the problem is that companies feel that they are in this very, very unforgiving competition with each other. And in order to win, they have to be agile, right? So this thing started somewhere with the uh, technology companies. Uh, it went into retail and banking. So they were kind of a late comers to this, uh, to this game. I, uh, my experience, uh, at some point I was working for Bank of America, which actually before Bank of America, the company was called, before Bank of America acquired them, it was called Countrywide Home Loans. Some of you guys may know them, some of you guys may not. Countrywide Home Loans uh, was very much responsible for the 2009 financial crash. Uh, I know it because I was there. So, but at that time, they were not agile. This is why I actually went into becoming an agile coach, because I had to do something in order to catch up with all these product requirements that was coming to me. Now, products in a banking environment is not like a laptop or anything like that. Product, when they come up with a new um, loan program or when they come up with a new savings program, that is a product. That's what they call it, right? So these products would come in and they would come to my group and my group was responsible for putting them into our system. And we were always late. We were missing deadlines constantly. So finally, I went to one of my uh, peers and I said, you know, I'm just really frustrated. And he goes, you know, there's a book I read. I think you should read it. It's called Agile. 
actually it was a book, uh, I, I don't remember, quite remember the title of it, but it was something that was talking about Scrum and Agile, and it was like, I think that would be something that you would try, your group is, you know, a fairly good size, you can actually try it with different uh, teammates. We tried it, it worked. The funny part was, we got stuff done. However, I was told that I had to actually revert back to our old process because everyone else was pissed off that we had nothing to do. So we caught up. We basically were sitting for others to do stuff. Others could not catch up. This was actually damaging the morale. So we had to go back to the whole waterfall model. That's how I actually then made a career move, 180 degrees, and went into Agile. But having said that, yes, banking is late because right now that same organization right now is trying to become Agile. They're on the wrong path, which is fine. I have no uh, problem later on catching up with that. Pharmaceutical and energy are on their way. If you uh, start looking into pharmaceutical companies or energy companies such as you know Merck or uh, uh, Exxon, Mobile, and those guys, there are pockets of agile implementation and agile transformation that's happening with them. Anyways, all these guys eventually, what they want is they want to actually be fast and they want to somehow be able to compete. All right? Real quick. There's two uh, sets of companies that I always refer to. One is traditional companies, which basically are the ones who assume that the world is predictable. Um, now, I understand you guys, we live in San Francisco. You guys live in San Francisco, I don't. And in San Francisco, things are on a very, very fast pace. Majority of you guys probably are working or know somebody who works for a startup company. But somehow outside of this place, there are roadmaps that I, actually I saw one last week, which was giving me a roadmap for 2025. And the only thing I had to say was that, hey guys, how do you know that you're even in business in 2025? But this is exactly where the traditional companies are. They think that the world is going to stay constant for them. Um, and couple of companies that I'm actually suggesting here is Nokia and Eastern Kodak and Motorola. You guys all remember Nokia, right? At some point, everybody had a Nokia phone. It was really ridiculous. They had that market. And all of a sudden, they lost it. They literally lost it. And that's because they made one bad product decision, which most other companies also did like Apple and Blackberry, and uh, I'm sorry, you like Microsoft and Blackberry. Who needs a smartphone? That was the question that was, you know, when smartphones were coming up and when iPhone was about to actually come together and, and, and be introduced, the question the product organization was asking, who needs a smartphone? Why? We want a phone, the phone does what it's supposed to do. So they couldn't, so the product vision, since it wasn't there, it took down the entire company. Eastern Kodak, they never saw the fact that people could actually take pictures on their phone or anything could be digitized. The pictures had to go, you had to go to a drugstore or somewhere else, get your pictures developed and all that. They were banking on selling, you know, all these, uh, uh, you know, films and, and, and things like that. It, it, it's really funny, but it's true. So, Then we come to Agile organizations, and what's nice about them, or at least the ones who actually can achieve agility, and I want you guys to actually remember the fact that uh, what I say about Agile organizations here, not every organization which drums the beating of Agile is Agile, and we're going to get there real quick as far as why, and hopefully you guys have an understanding after this talk that how to judge a company with its agility or not. The reality is that if there is a company which has achieved agility, then these guys, I look at them as a living system. A system that's alive. And the reason I say living system is because if you have achieved agility in your company, that means that 
you are very reactive and receptive to what's going on around you. Let's look at us from a human being right now. Right now, the weather in San Francisco today was great. So we all dressed pretty light, right? If it was raining, probably a few of you or majority of you guys would be carrying an umbrella. That's what living organisms do. They look for what is coming and they anticipate what they need to do. Now, if you were, a now let's translate that into traditional companies versus agile companies. A traditional company or a traditional man would come back and say, you know what, it's summertime, it hardly rains in summer, therefore I will not carry an umbrella. Or I will not believe that there would be any rain. Rain season has to start in late October. That is where things change. Okay? So agile organizations are viewed as living systems and they evolve and thrive uh, you know, uh, in an unpredictable environment. They actually adapt to it. They try to actually see what's coming around the corner. They focus on the consumer and the market, they see the trends, and they can adapt as the trends are establishing themselves and, and making a turn, okay? In all in all, they are better equipped for the future. Now, the big if is that if they have achieved agility, and we're gonna get there as far as what, what do I mean by that? Now, here's one thing. When you guys hear the word agile, what do you think? If a company tells you I'm agile, I mean, you guys go to interviews here, right? I mean, come on, this is San Francisco. Everybody has an offer every six months. I would say that agile, uh, as for comparison to the traditional uh, project management per se, I would say it is uh, more efficient. Or we have that notion. Why is it more efficient? That's why I'm here. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> okay, good. All right. What is continuous delivery? That they keep the production faster than other companies. Okay. What are we producing then? Features of a new product. Features of the new product. So because we have DevOps organization, which actually can do very, very fast stuff, and we have automated everything from development all the way down to production, gradual. Okay, good. All right, what else? Adaptive. Adaptive. All right, you got one too, for sure. And All right. I, you are not going to get any more uh, no, 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 stickers. No, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. I believe it's also connected to, well, connected to um, lean production as well. Lean. M more lean than the traditional. OK. See, I promise I won't go into those topics, but you bring it. See, they told me I got 45 minutes, and I'm supposed to deliver value for you guys in 45 minutes. That's very difficult for me, who actually talks for an entire day. All right, but lean. Um, yeah, you're supposed to. Lean is part of agile. Let's put it this way, OK? And because of all the definitions that everybody gave, let me just do this. So yeah, you're right, quickness, lightness is a movement. If you're not lean, you can't move like this. You can't have ease of movement. I mean, let's say if somebody is about to sprint for, you know, 100 meters under, let's say, 15 seconds, you better be on a certain level of shape. I probably can't do it. I'm working on it. I'm, I can't do it. So lean is important, but it is actually a subset of agility. Okay. All right, that's good. This is a definition that I really like about Agile, which is defined as the ability of a system to rapidly respond to change by adapting its initial stable configuration. As soon as you enter a Taco Bell store, you enter Taco Bell system. This is how it works. You're supposed to walk up, you look at the menu, you choose an item, you have to order that and pay for it. Once you pay for it, there is a pause. So you're, now this system goes into a pause and another system starts because an order has been received, right? 
Then that order goes in, gets processed, gets packaged. Once they deliver it back to you, that system is done. And then you receive your item, you either dine in or you walk out. And then you exit Taco Bell's system. Did you get that? Two systems are working together. So the reality is that every system has an input and an output. When the system is down, one of them is not working. Either the input is not working or the output is not doing what it's supposed to do. That's basically what it is. That's why you guys get calls, right? Okay, why do I say this stuff? So a system is set up intera uh, interacting or interdependent component parts forming a complex or intricate whole. That is what a system is. All right, well, before I get to Agile Manifesto, the reason is this. If you want to be an Agile company, you have to think like a system. You have to have system level thinking. If I am in the marketing department, I have to understand who is the system who is going to benefit from me and which system can actually give me benefit. Those of you who are in companies, have you guys heard about silos? We have silos. Isn't that funny? Company is only like, you know, 600 square foot of space and there's still silos. The reason the silos are there is because nobody understands what the system is. What systems are working together? Who am I affecting? If I release this product, who's going to get affected? What's going to happen to them? How is this going to change the outcome? That's why system level thinking is important. All right, we good? Okay, have you guys ever seen this? Agile Manifesto, right? Okay, so it's like kind of interesting because uh, when you read them, you go to, I think it's called agilemanifesto.org. If you go there, this is what you're gonna see immediately, right? And this was put together by the founding fathers of Agile. Very interesting group of people, read about them, some of them have stayed agile and some of them have completely stayed at where they were when they put this together. Different conversation, different topic. But what they say is individual interaction over process and tools. That's what they value. Working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. And this statement is right underneath it. It says, that is why there is value in the items on the right, we value on the, on the left more. What does this mean? What do they mean by that? Okay, so you guys are gonna know the answer to all of this by the end of this talk, which then you can go to your peers and, and ask them the same question and they're gonna start looking at you and you're gonna tell them, We'll figure it out. All right, let's figure this out. In order to be in an agile environment, you're gonna need a team. A majority of the time, this is the definition of a team. If anybody disagrees, let me know. Group of people with full set of complementary skills, right? You mentioned that at the very beginning, right? In an agile environment, a healthy team, I always say has to have these three rules in it. So if a team has to start up, it has to have somebody like a scrum master, a product owner, and a technical lead. Now, this guy is a misunderstood role. This guy is a misunderstood role. And so is this one. The reality is that every single one of them do a very distinct level of, uh, a, a, of job, which if they don't do it right, and if they overlap, the whole system is gonna break. This guy feels that he's the boss. This guy feels that all he does is write requirements. And then this guy is basically there to, fit, to make sure that everybody else codes. Wrong interaction. We're gonna focus on this guy first, and only, unfortunately, tonight. This whole thing is a day uh, conversation, but, let me give you something real quick about a Scrum Master. A Scrum Master 
If your Scrum Master keeps telling you what to do, he's not doing his job. And the reason he's not doing his job is because he doesn't know what he's doing. He has no idea what he's doing. And that's not his fault. It really isn't. The problem is that every company that who went agile, they had project managers. Once they decided they'd go agile, they're like, well, you're a project manager. Now, from now on, you're a Scrum Master. Here's what you need to do. You have a daily meeting, which is like for 15 minutes. You sit down with the guy, and uh, you, you, you sit down with the guy, and the guy says, hey, uh, here's what I did yesterday, here's what I'm going to do today, here's what I'm going to do tomorrow, and then that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't do anything else. Guess what? I mean, that is very, very, that is very, very good. And the reason is everybody likes that. I mean, and, the, and by the way, you get six figure, six figure salary for it. If you get six figure salary for it and you only have to have a 15 minute meeting on a daily basis, holy shit, I'll take it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I curse. Which is okay. Anyways, so this is the problem. The role is never explained, and the guy doesn't know what to do. So he feels, and this is really important for you to understand this, he feels vulnerable and he feels insecure. And what he does, he comes to you and he asks you, what did you do? Because that's if he feels that's serving his purpose, okay? So I'm asking you to forgive him, but ask him to understand what this guy really does.